Okay. Good morning, guys. Um, I wanted to go on here because I wanted to talk a little bit about who we are. Well, but first let me check to make sure I'm live because, okay. My daughter wants to watch, so if she wants to watch, I want to set it up so she can watch. <laughs> here we go. Thank here you go. All right. So um, this channel, Jesus Loving Homesteader, um, started because we wanted to record our journey for our family. Uh, I wanted them to be able to see our animals and our garden. At the time, we didn't even really have many uh, animals. We had a lot of, we had some chickens, but um, that was pretty much it. And we were brand new to raising chickens. We were fairly new to gardening on the scale that we wanted to garden in. We started with three gardening beds, uh, raised beds, and um, I think we started with like eight or seven chickens. We bought our house specifically because we wanted to raise um, animals and we wanted a bigger garden. Um, that was pretty much the whole reason we have our house now. We didn't care what it looked like inside. We just wanted the yard and it had a great yard. We're a little bit under a half an acre in um, North Texas. And right now it's so hard to get uh, that. <laughs> the houses they're building are huge and their land or property is so small. I mean, the yards are so much smaller now. Good morning, homesteading pastor, um, my brother and my friend. Um, so we were very blessed with when we bought our house. We bought our house in 2017. We bought our house with a on a mission um, with a dream, you know, in our minds, we knew we wanted to raise animals. We knew we wanted, um, to grow our own food. So, like I said, we started with three gardening beds and chickens. Eventually we found out about the back to Eden method. And, uh, that was kind of our first foot in the door with permaculture. Um, so back to Eden method was, uh, we had already started gardening, so we were using all the stuff. We were using like just a regular soil, bag soil from the store. We were using miracle Grow. We didn't know anything um, about the more organic natural method. A matter of fact, I was mixing organic methods with more chemical-based methods. I wasn't sure what I was doing. Um, and then I started going on YouTube and I came across um, the Back to Eden method. So the Back to Eden method, is pretty much you are trying to go do it as natural as possible. You're trying to create a soil that is living. And what that means, you want the organisms in your soil, you want the fungi in your soil, you want worms, you want um, lots of pollinators, you want your soil to work for you. So you want it to, you want to add a mulch, some type of mulch to break down to help. You want to use compost, you want to use worm castings. You want to mimic the system that the Lord has already done. I feel like um, right now we are so far from what God has done for our um, produce, our ground. We're so far from those methods. But with that, even now, um, we're starting to go back to that. We're starting to go back to going to more natural methods. Um, so we started calling arborists um I've, i stopped them on the street like i because in texas right now everybody's building so there's like houses going up everywhere but with that they're cutting down so many trees um so i anytime i see somebody cutting down trees and i need a a shipment of bolt a mulch i'll kind of stop them i'll be like hey where are you taking them wood chips <laughs> and so they will look at me kind of crazy but here, if you're usually if you're wood chipping or you're chipping the trees for a company, you're going to the dump and then you're going to pay $50 to dump the wood chips at the dump because you need somewhere to put these chips. You need somewhere to put this mulch. So with me telling them, hey, I live down the street. Can you dump it in my yard? That's free. And it's free for me and it's free for them. So a lot of the time you they don't have a problem with dumping mulch especially a good mulch this is good quality this is natural as natural as you're gonna get it 
Um, amen. Yes, ma'am. So far away. Yes. So far away. That's awesome. Building, building our soil has been one of the best things we've ever um, done. I'm so thankful that I came across like so many people doing permaculture methods and back to Eden methods because it makes a difference. Your, your plants, your, everything just makes such a difference. Even I've noticed it because we're coming on, I don't know, like three years, maybe four years. I'm not sure. Um, where now when my plants go to seed, these seeds are falling on good ground. They're falling on good ground. And with that, all these great, I have, man, I had like 30 chamomile plants, um, 10 to 15 dill plants, um, parsley, all these herbs reseeding and growing, cilantro all over my garden. Half of my, no, probably like 70% of my garden right now is just there because of plants that reseeded last year. So I didn't have to plant these but it's because they fell on good soil and because they fell on good soil, they germinated. I mean, that's just, that's the goal, right? To ha not have to continuously do this yourself, going out and buying seeds or saving seeds and just um, planting all the time, you know, saving seeds is good, but I mean, like how, why not want free plants doing it by themselves? I mean, the word says it too. You know, when I think about good soil, I've learned so many things. Well, the garden has been so confirming on a lot of the parables that the Lord gives in the word, um, like falling on good ground. And just with that, guess what else? Guess what else falls on, <laughs> on good soil? The weeds, the weeds grow too on great on good soil. So guess what I have to do? Bloop, 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 bloop. I have to pluck it all up just like the word. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's so funny, but guess what? When um, things like that, when I say weeds, a lot, there are weeds like um, Bermuda grass and things like that, but there are also a lot of good forage and medicinal plants that I don't necessarily want, not all of them in my garden. So guess what I do? I have the kids, I have my children work. I don't know about you guys. I get my children working in the garden. I get them working with the animals. I get them doing exactly what me and my husband do because at the end of the day, I am preparing them for life. I am preparing them to be husbands and wives and workers. And, you know, I'm preparing them to be um, what they need to be in this world. So I'll have them out there picking and then we'll give them to our animals. Our animals love the forage that grows out there. They, they love the quote unquote weeds. This is so funny, the background. <laughs> Good morning. Um, so as we're picking up all the sunflowers that reseeded, um, all the ragweed and the um, just a bunch of different things, plants, the henbit, and the dandelions even, which those are medicinal. You can use those as well. But as we're picking all these things out of the main garden where I want to plant other things, we're giving them to our chickens. We're giving them to our rabbits, um, our ducks, and they are getting so much nutrition from them. They absolutely love it. I mean, you could even have the option of laying it all out, letting it dry, crushing it up in their feed. They love it. Um, so as you're taking stuff out of the garden, you're putting them back into the system to your animals. I know a lot of people, which we've done this in the past, where they allow their chickens or their ducks to forage and go in their garden right before the gardening season. Why? They do that because they want that winter, because they want them to get to, to turn a little bit of the soil. They want them to naturally eat the bugs. Um, they want them to take care of their older plants so that the season can go to have a really good start and really good foundation when they go into it. My goats mowed down a banana. Oh, no. See, I, me and my husband, I don't want goats. Like when we get a bigger property, I know they're so beneficial when it comes to like prop, like first starting your property, getting rid of all of the stuff and eating all the weeds and everything. But my word, they're a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. We passed by a house the other day and she had a bunch of goats in the front yard and they had like a whole play place for them. They had like all the kid houses and like all these little swings and stuff because goats have to stay busy. And I was just thinking, I was like, I don't know if I have that type of, I don't know. I don't think I've, I'm motiv motivated enough for goats, but who knows? I, who knows? 
<laughs> a lot of people want goats. That's the funniest thing. A lot of people want them. I personally don't think I'm motivated enough to care for goats. I am a type of person where I want to be all in. So like if I want chickens, I'm going to be all in. If I want ducks, I'm going to be all in. So I don't think I can be all in for goats. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. But man, a banana tree. I really have been looking into banana trees for because uh, they have a few varieties that are like OK for our area. And I would love to eat like the mini bananas and stuff. I would love to do that eventually. But like I said, I'm not all in right now. I'm still kind of focusing on our main stuff. Um, so I had someone uh, contact me today. Well, not contact me, but they commented on one of my reels. I have a Facebook as well as a YouTube channel looking into some properties right now and already have chickens. Yes, chickens are the best starter animal. I mean, they are awesome. I love them. They're so low maintenance. Keep their place clean and they're happy. Uh, I had two, now it's like 15. Were you buying more goats or were they mating and having more babies? That's the question because sometimes you can get so caught up in like, oh, I want those goats. Oh, those are pretty goats. Oh, what a deal. Oh, for free? And then you turn around and you have like 500,000 animals. Goats for a while now, but we just got into raising sheep. Oh, yeah. I I know people that raise sheep. Yeah, they love them. They absolutely love them. I, I don't, I haven't dug that far because I don't have the property for it yet, but I'm sure once I get property, I'll be digging all into that. Um, I know for a fact, I want a milk cow so bad. I'll get two cows. That's all I'm looking for. I'm not trying to butcher and all that stuff. I just want milk. Okay. Then you're going to have to try something else. Okay. Something that I allow you to watch on prime. I know what you allow us to watch. What do I allow you to watch? <gasps> yes, that's fine. You can do that one um worse than rabbits see my rabbits i raise rabbits i don't know if you, a, a lot of you i don't post too much about my rabbits because they're just the most chill animal i mean they don't um, it's not like they're doing something awesome or something that i'm going to post about but um i rate we raise rabbits uh usually three does two male but right now we downsize just a little bit so we have some babies in one cage and then we have two females and then we have one male um, morning, Carmen, listening with the phone. Hello, how are you, Belinda and Chuck? Uh, Michaela, we actually have a little bit under a half an acre. And we raise uh, rabbits, chickens, and ducks. And right now, guys, we went a little chicken crazy. Um, <laughs> I started incubating eggs, and then my sister was like, hey, I have eggs for you to incubate. And she has Easter eggers and olive eggers. So I was like, ooh, I've never had those before. So I started incubating her eggs. So I have like three sets of chickens. I have um, five-week-olds, ten-week-olds, and then I have our um, regular chickens. So we just integrated our ten-week-olds with our regular bigger chick our bigger chickens. They seem fine. We added another coop. My sister had an old coop that got hit by lightning or something. I don't know. She had some big storm and she didn't want to fix it because she works full time and her husband works full time. So it's just hard for them to get that. She ended up getting a whole new coop thing. So we took it from her yesterday. Nathan completely fixed it, put new wood up and it looks so good for our 10 week old. So this, it was our first night yesterday. They did great. Um, so I, I'm super excited about that. Uh, we still have the, five, oh yes, we have chicks too. <laughs> we have three week old chicks, I wanna say, and they are Polish. <laughs> and um, I think I got three barred rock, Plymouth rock, three Plymouth rock. I'm so excited about the Polish, so excited. They're so cute. That's a completely just, that's just a buy that, I just want it because my friend really want, she was sending me videos of Polish chickens and I wanted to surprise her for her birthday and get her some Polish chickens. And then I wanted Polish chickens. So we just have a whole bunch of Polish chicks just surviving until they get older and ready to integrate. By the look of your videos, I thought you had a bigger chunk. You do a lot. Yes, that was actually my whole point of this video, <laughs> but I got caught up in talking, But <laughs> which I have no problem with. That's why I like lives because I can talk to you guys but my whole point of this video is you do not have to have a huge property to raise animals and have a garden. And that was my biggest thing when we started actually pushing our YouTube to more than just family. 
um, I wanted to show people that you can do a lot more than with what you have, a lot more. Um, it's just a matter of planning and having a secure, good area. I mean, you want the fences. You want to have a plan. You don't want to just buy all these animals and just stick them in your yard and be like, woohoo. You, no, you have to have a plan. You have to know what you're doing. You have to do a lot of research. Um, same thing with your garden. You have to plan it out. You have to know what plants are native here. You have to know, you have to get perennials in um, if you want wildflowers because they bring in the pollinators first. Wildflowers and native plants. They and allowing your grass to grow in the beginning of the spring to bring out all those um, beneficial plants, those quote unquote weeds that aren't actually weeds, they're going to flower. They bring in the pollinators first. So what they're saying is, hey, guys, there is lots of nectar and deliciousness over here in this yard. You're going to want to hang out here. So when the pollinators come over here, they're going to see, ooh, this is the place to be. And then when your plants grow and then they flower and you need them pollinated, the pollinators are already going to be there because they know this is the place to party. This is the place to get the buffet. So you want those things. And so when you start a garden, you want perennials. You want your natives first. You want to lay down that to get it started. So let me see. Do, do, do. Yes, I have meat rabbits. They're Tamuk composites. Paw Patrol is the bomb. Yeah, it's one of the more cleaner shows. My word, we do. I, I I literally feel like my kids watch nothing. We watch animal documentaries, gardening shows, and like right now media. It's actually a church subscription um, where they have like cleaner shows. But even on there, I mean, like some of the cartoons, they say words like stupid and stuff like that. I don't let my kids say those words. Like I don't let them say stupid. Like that's just not okay. So we there's some things we still stray from. We have a daughter named Kayla. Do, do, do. Polish chicks. Polish are so cute. My goodness. Just added 21 beehives. Oh, that's awesome. That's super cool. Um, we raised bees for three years and we just couldn't get it going. Our property's just not like it was perfect for the garden. We were real the bees did not bother us at all. I could get up so close just taking videos of them. But then it just an African swarm. African bee swarm took over our hive and killed all our good bees and it started getting crazy. So we were just like, I don't have the space for this. I just don't have time for this. So we ended up um, getting rid of our beehive and we're going to start again whenever we get bigger property. Bees take a lot more time, um, especially the way we were doing it. I don't know. Um, just the bee checks and stuff. It just wasn't working out for us. So next time, next time. The 21 beehives, that's awesome. I will totally be buying honey from you once you get your honey in order. I know a bunch of people with the same name, but never spelled the same. Michaela, yeah. Yeah, I actually, yes, I've never seen, I've seen an M-A, I think. I've never seen it spelled your way. Um, what did I, what else did I want to discuss? Oh, uh, I, had, I had this whole list of stuff that I wanted to discuss. Oh, okay, so... I don't know if you're in this area, some of you, but um, there are a few nurseries right now, um, Ron's Organics and uh, Brumley, Ron's Organics in Balch Springs and Brumley's is in Wills Point. There are a few nurseries right now who still have tomato and pepper plants and they're going for cheap, like dirt cheap, because sometimes later in the season, for tomato plants, pepper plants, they don't want to pot up their plants. And because of that, their plants start to look a little sad. So they're like, okay, a dollar, a dollar fifty. Jump on those deals. Jump on them. And the reason why I say that is because these plants, I don't know if you've ever you've gone lately out to just, I don't know, tractor supply, Walmart or something like that. These plants are like five dollars, six dollars each. I have never like I can't believe how expensive these plants are like starting from seed because we started starting from seed I don't know like two years ago like fully like just trying to completely start from seed and it's so easy to do as long as you're working on your foundation of your soil you know these seeds should germinate completely fine um if we start plants inside we use a mix of cocoa core um worm castings and vermiculite and that's been a great starter mix for us, nice and soft enough to get it started and germinated and the roots really nice. And then we'll put them in there. But you guys really watch out for these deals. Um, don't pay $6 a plant unless this plant is like, you can't find it anywhere else. Like it is the best thing ever. 
do not pay $6 a plant. There are local nurseries who are going to sell it way cheaper than Walmart is selling it. Um, a lot of these flowers, uh, check the tags to see if they're sprayed. They'll tell you right on the tag if they're sprayed with anything, a lot of the brands and stuff. You don't want to bring in pollinators and then be the reason why they died. A lot of these plants have been sprayed and dyed with different things. And they kill the pollinators and we need them. We definitely need them. And we don't want, you know, these things on our plants anyway, bringing chemicals into your garden when you want to go the organic method. We try our best to stay the organic method. My friend in high school was Michaela. Let me see. Game, black game hens are brooding like crazy. See, you know what's so crazy? Um, our ducks, we have two broody ducks. They're sitting on eggs right now. We have our Musco both Muscovies, super broody. I think out of like the four years we've had chickens or five years we've had chickens, I've maybe had two broody for a very small amount of time. Um, at the time I didn't have a rooster or I wasn't looking to incubate eggs. So I just put like a frozen bag of fruit or not fruit veggies underneath them to kind of tell them, Hey, don't be broody. It like helped their regulate their temperature. I don't know. But yeah, after that, I never had broody hens unless I just don't see them. But I, I don't know. It's so weird. Is there like a, a special breed that is more broody than other ones? I'm not quite sure. This is actually the first year I've dug into our chickens as deeply as I have been lately. I don't know why. I've always had chickens. We've never had issues. We've never had health issues. I believe a lot of that is because we give them a lot of space to forage. And um, overall, they eat really well. They really do. This is actually, um, they eat all the veggies and stuff from our garden and plus their food. We just changed all of, changed their um, crumble or their pellets from pellets to a mix that we create now. Sunflower seeds, flax seeds, split peas, um, red wheat, and there's something else. I don't know. There's like a five ingredient mix we do now. Um, we did that after we found out about some of the uh, feed bags being tainted with. Um, so we started mixing our own um, and overall, we have healthy chickens, but after kind of learning about the feed, we started really investigating about um, chickens in general. So I, I feel like I'm like learning so much. We, in the beginning of our journey, we focused on gardening. I mean, a lot. It's like garden, 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 getting a uh, good foundation, uh, getting more native plants, um, organic, uh, just all this stuff. And then I feel like now that we've progressed beyond the garden, I feel like we're starting to learn a lot more about our animals and how to care for them in a way that is more kind of mimicking what is happening out in, you know, I don't know, the way it was intended. I had somebody on my Facebook comment today because I posted a picture, picture of me clipping half of their flight feathers because that's what I do. Uh, we clip. I mean, we're still, we're ha about a half acre, but I don't want them flying over the fence. I don't want it. I don't want to injure them getting injured. The people don't care about their dogs. There's usually dogs all over the place, like literally wild dogs everywhere. I don't want to harm our animals. So we clip their wings. I don't want them flying over the fence. I don't want them dying. Well, I had someone comment today and she was like, how dare, pretty much it's inhumane to clip their wings, which we clip one wing flight feathers. It's just as if you were clipping your nails. I mean, and that hurt my feelings. I'm like, but I want to keep them safe. Don't, immediately I was brought to the point where I was like, don't listen to people. Like if you are trying to keep your animals safe, especially if you're in a smaller, I know I get it. A lot of chickens free range on bigger properties. Ours has a pretty big space to kind of free range in the electric fence. Um, so do what you have to do to take care of your animals and don't listen to people, especially when they don't know. It's always the people who don't have animals that have so much to say about them. Um, <laughs> isn't that, is, is it just my experience? It's like the people who have no clue are always the ones. I was like, oh my word. Let me look. Uh, 10 black old English game chickens. They escape wild dogs better than homemade chickens. One is sitting on many eggs. Another one is laying under. I'm so excited 
to watch our ducks hatch their ducklings. I'm nervous too, but I'm super excited to see little ducklings there, especially Muscovies. That was our goal. We wanted Muscovy ducks. And I know a lot of people don't want them. I have no idea why. I love our Muscovy ducks. They are quiet. They are sweet. Um, they are good mothers. They raise their young. They, they're awesome. But the only thing they fly. So what do you do? We clip their wings too. And it was a big deal when somebody saw that we clipped their wings too. I'm like, guys, like let we're taking care of our animals. Like, would you rather us clip their wings or them fly over and get eaten by a dog or something or get ran over or I don't know, anything? People are crazy, y'all. There's always gonna be some. Uh let me look. Yeah, some of these chicken. Oh, yeah, I got to tell you. So we had a we have Welsh Harlequin as well. We have one male and three female Welsh Harlequin. I love that breed as well. But we're actually getting ready to get rid of our um, Welsh Harlequin Drake. And the reason why he's very active and he because our Muscovy Drake is our main Drake, he tries to overcompensate and try to be super masculine. And so he, he bothers everyone. <laughs> and we just integrated our, um, we extended our area for our chickens and our ducks and kind of moved them together. They were doing great. But our Welsh Harlequin Drake, because he's not the head honcho, he's like, he was trying to be mean to everyone. And he was being mean to the roosters and the chickens. And okay, so as this was happening, uh, we have a bantam chicken. I mean, the tiny bantams, like the the super small ones that don't even look real. She immediately, like the uh, the Welsh Harlequin Drake was bothering the rooster. She jumped on top of the Welsh Harlequin Drake and started like fighting him. And the Drake backed off. It was the best, funniest thing ever. I literally, the bantam is like the equivalent to a chihuahua. Where it's like, I am, you know, I'm small, but I'm mighty. So it was it was kind of cool to see. It's so cool to watch the animals. I love watching them. It's, it's just fun for me. I enjoy it a lot. So if you need a Welsh Harlequin Drake and you're in the area, Kaufman County area, I would love to meet up with you and you can have him. He's super sweet. He just doesn't want, he wants to be the head honcho. He wants to be the one Drake. And that's just what it is. Lay smaller and less eggs, but brood like crazy. They multiply fast. Mine are nine months old, shipped from across the country. Oh, very cool. Wild game fowl chickens. Some of the feed and seed stores around here are selling biddies for a $5 piece. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've, I've been incubating eggs. I stopped, though, because like I said, I have three kinds of chickens right now at three ages. So, um... We're just waiting on the ducks to uh, do their um, ducklings. And we kind of, if you don't have an electric fence, like a netting, those are the absolute best. I love those uh, nettings. We just create little spots for them. We have a specific spot now to where we have the two broody hens in their own little slot so that the other chickens don't bother them. They do great. And you know what I've noticed? That well, they're the ducks, the broody ducks. What I've noticed is because they're in their own spot and they know they're safe and they know their nest is safe, they just get out and they'll eat and they'll drink and they'll go back on. They're much more willing to get off the eggs a little bit, eat, drink, and then come back to the eggs. I think because some they feel safe. Um, so I'm excited. I'm so excited. Um, so I just wanted to jump on here and kind of tell you guys who we are trying to reach. Um, I love that we have, I can't believe honestly that we've reached so many people and we have gained so many friendships. A lot of you like homesteading pastor, uh, his word delights my heart and I am in love and all these people on here, uh, Jake, um, all, all, uh, life with Belinda and Chuck, just so many of you, we've gained so many great relationships with never expected that. And a lot of you are across the country, which is so cool to me. But our, our main goal was to tell the backyard gardener, the backyard chicken person, you know, you can do more with your space. You can do more with a small space than you think you can. The one that's in an apartment, my sister has 
oh my goodness, she has transformed her patio in her apartment. She has two raised beds, like little raised beds, and then she has a bunch of house plants. She has um, two rabbits. She, I mean, she's transformed her small space and created something that works for her, where she's also gaining great um, the veggies and stuff just by in the apartment. Um, if you end up getting a new apartment, if you want to move, ask for a patio with full sun. Look for one that um, has full sun and you can start your own journey, even if you're not on land yet. It's possible. And I know there are some YouTube accounts that talk specifically on that. Um, I want to encourage you because you know what? There's We're living in a time, perilous times. We are living in perilous times. And you know what? Uh, that People are shady <laughs> and they're messing with our food. Pray over your food. Pray over your food. There's a reason why we pray over our food. Pray over your food. Pray over your property. Pray over your soil. Pray over your animals. Pray, pray, pray. Because through prayer, I mean, that's the only really guarantee that we're protected. You know, the Lord is, it's it. He's it. So um, I want you guys to realize that this world does not have good intentions for us at all. They don't care about us. So you're going to have to start to care about you. You're going to have to start to uh, care you know, about your family, your friends. So why not start small? Start small by a garden. Start small by um, collecting different organic flowers or beans, um, things that you know you can store away. You don't have to have like a bunker full of food. You know, that'd be cool, but you don't have to. You don't have to have a root cellar full of food. But it's just the little things that you can do to start to build a supply in case you needed it, in case your family needs it. Start being more aware and opening your eyes to what's going on in the world. Don't be ignorant. You know, even Joseph, the Lord gave Joseph a dream and was like, hey, there is going to be famine and you have to be ready. You know, and what did Joseph do? Joseph went and he told Pharaoh and they did what they had to do. They collected and not only for them, it wasn't just for them. They collected and they fed so many people, so many people. Um, I want that. That's my goal. My goal is to create um, something like to where we're all doing our part, that we're all saving, collecting and preserving and raising that we can make trades. Yesterday, well, my sister has a female goose and this goose is the sweetest little goose, Chinese goose. And um, she's been waiting for she's been wanting to get a male for him, for her, um, so a gander. So yesterday I saw one online um, on a local marketplace thing. And I was pretty much like, how much is your goose? She set a price and I was like, well, I'm not going to do that. I can't do that price. You know, that's a little bit more than I wanted to spend. So she was like, well, let's trade. What do you have? Awesome. Yes. So I ended up trading her two meat rabbits for the gander. And I was able to give that to my sister. You know, now she's going to get goose eggs, fertilized goose eggs. She could probably incubate those and, you know, start something. You know, just, I don't know. You, you'll never know unless you start. You'll never know what you can do, what you're capable of, what God is leading you to do. Just do it. How exciting. Even in the smallest little ways, I'm prepared. There's these little things. I saw this book. I found this book back in the day. You know, it was published, I don't know, 1970s or something, where people would take mason jars. And they would pack them with um, dehydrated foods or like a cocoa mix or apple pie mix or something. It'd be like a mix. And they would put ribbons on them and they would give them to families they, as gifts or whatever. These, this was very popular, very um, normal to give people preserved foods and different things because they're going to use them, right? They're going to use it. Who, who doesn't like to eat? <laughs> who doesn't need to eat? You know, and now I see ourselves in our world and like when you get gifts and stuff, you go to Walmart and there's a whole aisle of like really crummy, bad chemical filled lotion sets and body washes and all this garbage that you put on your skin and then you got a rash later. And I'm like, let's go back to homemade. Let's go back to um, doing it ourselves and with good, fresh, clean ingredients um, and start giving people those gifts, start, uh, doing uh, barter systems and, you know, let's go back to that. Why not? I mean, it worked for so long. Let's do it again. Y'all pray. Y'all be praying for my wife, Robbie Lynn. She's been sick all night with a stomach virus. Oh no. 
Yes, we'll be praying for Robbie Lynn. Lord God, I ask that you touch Robbie Lynn right now, Lord Jesus. I pray healing over her body right now, Lord God. Head to toe, Father, we pray for cleansing, Father. We pray that she's able to get up, Lord God, and I pray that her body be cleansed and clean, Father. We pray healing over her in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood over their home, Father, and I pray that you camp your angels around their territory, Lord God, and that that does not go to anyone else in their household. In Jesus' name, amen. Game Rooster made it with one of my Rhode Island Reds, and I would love to have a Game Foul Rhode Island Red mix. That would be cool. Our Rhode Island Reds are so... <laughs> They're bossy, <laughs> but I love them, but they're so bossy. It's so funny. They're such a strong breed. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get ready to go. I'm so thankful and glad you guys were able to come on here, and um, I'm thankful that you guys are able to support us. We love you guys, and we appreciate you guys. We're so thankful for all you do and um, the comments, the likes, and the shares. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing day and I hope this video kind of helped you a little bit or because I, I know I kind of I'm very scattered <laughs> kind of just like doo, 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 topic 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 well we love you guys God bless you and have a great day